Good afternoon, financial professionals. I'm Dan Peterson, President and Managing Partner at E4 Insurance Services, welcoming you to The Brew, where we build relationships every week. Thanks for tuning in today. For those of you joining The Brew for the first time, welcome. We like to start The Brewcast by celebrating today's national days. Now, I know we have some in our audience that are going to enjoy this day, the National Golfers Day. So let's get out there on the links and hit them straight, right down the middle. Um, and it's fitting that this is also Masters Week. It's National Hug Your Dog Day, and something I try to make a regular practice. It's amazing how your dog's always happy to see you when you come home after a long day. National Sibling Day. Put that arm around your sibling, reach out and touch, and it's National Farm Animal Day. I don't know what that has to do with Brendan being on today, but it it is National Farm Animals Day. Brendan, maybe you'll have some insights into that. Well, today's brew... to... <laughs> Go ahead. I was going to say, I love to eat some farm animals. Uh, I'm not sure that that's a correlation unique to me, but hey, thanks for tying that together. There you go. Well, today's brew is uh, continues our April-focused series on estate planning. Uh, we switched over last week with Brett Berg from Prudential, advanced markets attorney who really shared a great concept of plan now, gift now, and insure now. And we're going to follow that up and dive into a case study about the Montgomery family, a high net worth couple in their early 50s. They reside in Minnesota. And they possess substantial assets, including properties, investments, a thriving business. And joining me today to help present this is my very own partner, Brendan Narone, our Chief Distribution Officer and Managing Partner. Brendan? Thanks, Dan. Uh, I'm going to play the part of the uh, advisor today as um, they weren't able to, to be on, but I did, uh, did help the RVP and advisor on this case, so familiar with some of the details and uh, I will tell you that their name is not actually Montgomery's uh, that was changed to protect the innocent but uh, this is this is typical of a lot of conversations we're having these days um, with you know up, upcoming sunset of the tax provisions people are realizing that now is the time to start making you know plans for the future and you know, the exemption is is more than likely going to go down. Uh, I've had this conversation uh, more often than not later. And regardless of, you know, who gets elected in power, uh, there's one thing I'm certain of, and that is that the government uh, is effective at doing nothing together. Um, so it is easiest just to let this law sunset, which means that, you know, our exemption limits are going to come down. So if you want to take advantage of that today, now is the time uh, to reiterate what Brett Berg said last week. So yeah, uh, Montgomery's, I think you teed it up pretty well there, Dan. They have they have some assets. Um, their assets are continuing to grow. Um, they already have an estate tax today, but with uh, the beauty of inflation and growth, their estate tax is, is only going to just grow in the future. And um, while they're healthy today, we've urged them to take advantage of their insurability and, and put a plan in place that's going to provide you know, a legacy for their children and children's children and grandchildren, many generations to come. Intergenerational wealth uh, can definitely be be a reality for the Montgomery's. Brendan, I know that uh, here at E4, we have a number of tools that can help uh, guide and shepherd a discussion, open doors, uh, share opportunities in the estate planning space. And I believe you're going to share a particular tool that is actually uh, tying into what Brett brought to us last week. It's actually one of Prudential's tools, but we have other carriers that also offer this. Um, are you going to maybe bring that up? Because there's yeah. there's uh, there's certain things. And at the end, we're going to talk about how to, how to get uh, your hands on one of these. Um, okay, so we're seeing your uh, checklist here. State yeah, state, yeah. This is this is Prudentials, and as Dan said, we have it from from number of carriers. You can also, you know, just white label it if you want, or put your own um, logo up top. Easy, easy enough to make that. But 
we had this conversation internally, you know, who, who would be the ideal client for estate planning? And it's, you know, it's really any family that's got 5 million plus of net worth. When you look at, at growth and where, you know, we think estate tax changes are coming, um, you know, any million, any family with 5 million or more likely is going to be, you know, in that, that arena. And then depending you know, on the state, as we're talking about the Montgomery's, they're in Minnesota and they have a, a state estate tax. Many, uh, many states have state estate taxes or gift taxes or inheritance tax, depending on what they want to call it, um, at varying levels, some quite a bit less, you know, than the federal. But, you know, the checklist, make sure they have everything in order. I would about guarantee that most people don't. So then the next step, is to go to, you know, the estate fact finder. And once we have, you know, this filled out and, and most of the details, we can start to do some analysis and come up with um, what their estate tax liability, you know, is going to be in the future. And there, one of the assumptions that you ask is, is really a key one because it gets into the compounding effect of, of growth. Uh, is is the growth rate that the advisor wants to assume, depending on the type of business they have, the asset mix, the class, uh, their future plans, if there's charitable gifting, all of those types of things can go into that. But really, that growth rate assumption is a key uh, number that uh, an advisor should be thinking about. Oh, absolutely. Um, and, you know, we often uh, try to err on the side of of conservative growth rates. Um, we had a client the other day who said, well, my business has been growing at, you know, 15%. I, I want to use that as our, you know, compounding factor. And, you know, we urged them that that might be a bit aggressive. And although it's, yes, it's growing at that today over the long run, maybe not realistic, but nonetheless, we went through it and we showed over a billion dollars of estate tax liability. This was a younger individual. Uh, and, and after he saw that number, he said, yeah, Maybe we maybe we can dial that back and five percent sounds sounds good. It might be higher than that, but let's let's look at five percent. So um, I'll go ahead and and share the output for the Montgomerys, Dan. Um, there's two outputs that we have, correct? There's there's the basic output. It's kind of the snapshot of this is your situation, correct? And that's what you're going to begin with. Um, so, and then there's a secondary output, which is what happens if we we use some tools that here at E4 and our advisors have at their fingertips, which is life insurance. So this one is is the snapshot of no no life insurance, correct? Correct. This is the Montgomerys. You know, if if they do nothing uh, and their estate continues to grow at at five percent. They still stay in Minnesota uh, and everything stays equal. You know, in 36 years, their life expectancy, their estate will grow to $289 million, leaves them a taxable state of 286 or 200, sorry, 262 million taxable estate, which is a federal estate tax of 86 million and a state tax of 45 million. Um, that is going to take quite a sizable dent, you know, out of their legacy. The other thing that I really like about this report is not only do we have, you know, the different state, state attacks, state, state tax uh, limits and rates, but also a history of the federal estate. And this is, you know, this is one thing that I get asked quite often. Um, well, what do you, what do you think is going to happen with the federal estate tax. And my response to that is, well, my two favorite four letter words. Um, and because this is a, a PG uh, brewcast, I'll tell you that my two favorite four letter words are mass and debt. So given the debt that we've had uh, and the fact that math has to pay for that debt, I don't see any way that we can't have some sort of federal estate tax as you know, the dead uh, can't vote, so it's easiest to tax them. 
That's uh, interesting that the estate tax was first enacted back in 1797 to pay for the war effort uh, and with France uh, support so and, and to fund the debt there. So that's how far back it really does go. Yeah. And when you look at times that it has come back, it is either because of uh, war or I think in our current situation, you know, it's going to be combination potentially, you know, wars funding our allies and COVID relief, which has put a lot of debt into um, our, our, our debt, debt oh. into our debt. It, at the end of the day, we did do a, a leverage strategy with this family. Um, and are you bringing that up? Because there was five I solutions am. that was really focused on in response to their situation. And, and I want to remind everyone as our listeners that, as Brett said last week, there's only three places wealth can go. Your wealth can go to family your wealth can go towards charity or giving, and your wealth can go to the government through taxation. There's only three places that it can go. And the goal here is to pick out how can we uh, pick the ones that we like the best and provide the most for them as opposed to the, to the tax situation. So I'm looking at your potential legacy, Brendan. Yeah, so again, this, this top box is what we you know showed before after estate taxes you know that legacy to the family is a hundred and fifty seven thousand um and you know still very sizable but when you looked when you look at again that their estate value uh was going to be 289 million to only leave and i say only uh 157 million to the family uh again you've you've lost a lot of dollars uh and don't have quite the same family legacy and obviously this is a a bigger case but still apropos at you know at lesser levels if it was a drop a, drop a yeah. zero off of the net worth and it's still significant exactly so you know with using and, and in this scenario we ended up having a hundred million dollar death benefit which again is a lot um, but, uh, sorry, uh, we now have 215 million going to the family instead. So a sizable improvement. And there was five areas of planning that came out of this, this case study, uh, with the Montgomery's. The first was an irrevocable life insurance trust. Uh, can you describe <clears throat> why an islet? uh with the life insurance yeah so again in order to have an asset not be taxed at the estate tax level you have to have it outside of the estate an islet or an irrevocable life insurance trust is just that it is an asset held outside the estate which can transfer to the beneficiaries you know estate tax free by putting life insurance in place we're not adding to the estate tax problem, we're separating that from the existing estate. The second thing is that the recommendation came down and the purchase was made not on an individual life insurance policy, but on a survivorship universal life insurance policy. Maybe share with our listeners why that was chosen. Yeah, in, in most instances, your cost of insurance, which is the, you know, the real uh, inefficiency in in transferring this wealth, um, but gets you the leverage is is best on a survivorship or two lives. Um, from the insurance company's perspective, you know accidental deaths do happen. Some people walk in front of a bus and get killed, um, and you know if that happens accidentally, and you had a single life policy, the insurer would have to pay that death benefit. But on a survivorship or second to die, they don't pay until that second death. So they're able to remove some of the, you know, the accidental risk also, you know, take the health of, of two individuals. And it is just a more efficient tool to transfer that wealth. Less dollars in to get more dollars out. And then again, it's also tied to the third piece of this, which was the gifting 
strategy, a leveraged gifting strategy, using their annual gift tax exclusions to pay for the life insurance, correct? Correct. So um, every individual in, in 2024 um, can gift up to 18000 to any other individual. So, you know, if let's just keep it simple. Uh, a husband and wife had one kid. They each could gift 18000 or $36,000 and the annual gift um, outside of their state without, you know, incurring any sort of gift tax. And the more beneficiaries they have, the more that will multiply. So um, that that is the annual gift. And then they are also using some of their lifetime gift exemption, which currently is 13610 per individual. Now that will likely cut in half after the sunset uh, in 2026. So they're able to use some of their lifetime or an additional, you know, let's call it 13 million upfront today that they won't be able to use later. So we can, depending on how we fund that life insurance, we can use those dollars. And obviously the couple has to have liquidity, but we can use that to help uh, use their gifting strategy. Um, um, because they're state specific laws, the fourth piece of the, of the plan was to involve a Minnesota uh, estate planning attorney who could walk them through all of the, the nuances of the Minnesota estate tax as well as the federal. And there are a number, whether it's farmland, farmland exemptions, closely held uh, small business exemptions, so on. Uh, it's very important to involve the qualified estate planning attorney who's who's knowledgeable of the uh, benefits in their state. And that was that was ultimately something that the clients uh, did did enact, correct? It, exactly. And yeah, they they leaned on their local attorney for that. Um, and I would, you know, each state has um, its own intricacies, in uniqueness. Uh, and working with a local attorney, they know some of those rules as as Dan and I were just talking about a potential case uh, an hour ago in North Dakota, um, and not my home state, yours, Dan, uh, you talked about some land ownership issues that I was unaware of. We, we can't have corporate farming. Uh, corporations cannot own farmland. So um, there's a ban on that. They don't want the individual farmers to be competing against corporations. So it has to be individually owned. Yeah. Uh, the last piece was the beneficiary that I thought I I read on this case uh, that they they established a dynasty trust to establish the proceeds from the survivorship policy that was held in the islet uh, and other assets that were designated for their children. Can you talk at all about what that dynasty trust provided them? Yeah. So again, that's that's intergenerational legacy. So not only does it provide them, you know, asset protection, creditor protection, but they also, you know, have the benefits of, of generation skipping, you know, transfer tax. So now, you know, they have created, again, intergenerational wealth for not only their kids, their grandkids, but future generations so that they can, you know, have a leg up. Well, that's good. Those five key areas and this and these tools that we have available, I, um, there is that fact finder. There's the the checklist. There's a number of things that we will be sending out with links. Uh, we'll be sending out links for the study. It will also be uh, this will be on our website, and uh, the there'll be under Marketing Central. Uh, you can download the full PDF version of this if you don't want to use the link. Uh, so through our website, these will be made available. Uh, is there any questions? We'll open it up right now for questions. Uh, we don't see any today. We want to thank everyone for joining us. Uh, but Brendan, we do have a gift for a drawing for a Starbucks gift card and a uh, CE certificate. Can you pick a number between 1 and 29? Uh, how about 25? Number 25. The winner today is 
Erica Osborne. Congratulations, Erica. You'll be receiving communication from us along with a Starbucks gift card and a CE voucher. Thank you for being on the call today. And uh, on next week's brew, I, I just wanted to mention tomorrow, you should be receiving an email from me on an always be learning. And we're going to walk through more of these concepts as we focus on estate planning this month. Next week, Spru, we welcome back Dave Sazik, who will be reviewing compensation strategies that business owner clients face. And Dave works with other financial professionals throughout the country to provide solutions to many of the issues their business clients face, such as recruiting, rewarding, retaining key employees, and correcting deficiencies in current benefit plans. Uh, so we look forward to hearing from Dave. Uh, as he talks about reviews, assets, rep uh, repositioning, assisting the business owner to get the most out of their business and the ultimate transfers, which ultimately ends up on the personal balance sheet, which provides the need for estate planning. Well, Brendan, thank you for joining me today. We uh, pleasure, Dan. want to thank everyone and we will see you next week on The Brew.